Um, hello, everyone. My name is Omono. Um, I'm working at the Memorial Sloan Gallery. Um, so thank you for um, thank you um, the Kemda committee members for organizing this conference. I participated in um, a challenge for NLP, um, so which is drug induced inventory prediction. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about um, the method I used for the challenge and the result. Um, okay. So the background. The drug induced liver injury daily is a, an um, adverse um, hepatic drug reaction that can be um, uh, the life threatening um, the liver the failure. So previously published work in the scientific um, the literature can provide the valuable insight for the understanding of um, the liver toxicity as well as uh, drug development. However, the manual search of scientific literature in PubMed is laborious. So NLP techniques have been developed to decipher and understand the meaning of human language by extracting useful information from unstructured pretext data. So we have developed an integrated NLP and machine learning um, model to identify daily uh, related literature using only uh, paper titles and the abstract provided by uh, Kemda. So, uh, so for text classification, um, pre-processing consists of multi uh, steps, including tokenization, cleaning, normalization, and the lemmatization. NLTK and the spacey Python libraries uh, provide very useful functions for this task. The vectorization, vectorization is the process to extract quantitative features from um, uh, the pre-processed uh, pre text before the machine learning modeling. So in, uh, given this text, uh, tokenization split the text into um, the tokens, including uh, comma and punctuation, the cleaning is uh, to remove all undesirable words, including punctuation and stop words. Um, but the most stop words are the most common words, um, which is not uh, very informative for this task. But there is no uh, golden standard to define. Sp Spacey has uh, 312 uh, stop words, NLTK has 179 words. Normalization convert uh, any non-text uh, information to a textual format um, that convert date to text, the correct misspells, and the handle abbreviation. Uh, the monetization um, the convert words to their root forms. For example, in the previous uh, uh, um, text, example, the scent was converted to scent and the FEB was converted to February. So for vectorization, I want to introduce two terms, term um, frequency TF. TF is um, the fraction of the number of times um, the word T appearing in a document, D, to total number of the words in D. But this TF does not, um, TF is the frequency based does not consider um, uh, the rare words. So to make up for that, inverse document frequency IDF is uh, used. So for complementary information, TF times IDF uh, is used as a quantitative features for modeling. So in this example, um, there are two sentences. So let's make a TF IDF table. Um, Um, in this table, the, the first column uh, lists all words from two sentences. And then uh, in TF computation, uh, numerator is the number of words appearing in that sentence. And then denominator is the total number of words it, in each sentence. And the IDF, the logarithm, the scale, 
the numerator is the total number of sentences here too, and the denominator is how many uh, sentences include the specific the word. And then TF IDF, uh, I mean TF times IDF is used as quantitative features. So word embedding, word embedding is another type of vectorization technique in NLP. Um, so in word embedding, words from the vocabulary are mapped to vectors of real numbers. Um, the basic concept, basic idea of this uh, is that the words of the same context usually appear together in close proximity in the, in the corpus. So they will be close in the vector space as well. Um, several algorithms have been developed for word embedding, including word to back, globe, and the fast text. So in this study, I used the word to back. Um, with the GeneSim Python library. So we specify the target size of word vector 200. So in this example, so each word um, is represented by a vector of 200 values. So we average them out to, um, so as a result, each sentence is represented by a single 200 dimensional the vector. So which is used for our um, the modeling. So BERT is a language model, um, so which is a transform transformer based machine learning model for NLP applications uh, developed by Google in 2018. Uh, BERT architecture consists of several transformer encoders stacked together. So each transformer um, encoder encapsulates to sub layers and self attention and uh, feed forward layers. There are two BERT architectures. BERT base uh, has 12 layers of transformer encoder, um, 12 attention has, and the 768 uh, hidden uh, size trained by 110 million parameters. BERT large uh, is much heavier architecture. So in this study, we, we use the BERT base. Then we um, employed a pre-trained BERT model in this study, trained using many, many books and the Wikipedia. So BERT learns uh, information from a uh, sequence of words, uh, not only from a uh, left to right, but also right to left. So BERT vocabulary is fixed with a uh, size of uh, 30,000 tokens. Um, so words that are not part of vocabulary are represented as sub-words or characters. So BERT input um, is a sequence of words, tokens, and then there are two special tokens, CLS and the SAP. CLS is uh, added in the beginning of the sequence. SAP uh, is appended um, at the end of the sequence. The maximum size of token that can be uh, fed into BERT is 500 Pad is added if the number of tokens um, is less than uh, 512. If that is um, the larger than 512, those are truncated. So tokenizer <clears throat> produce input ID, token type ID, and the attention mask. Um, BERT output is embedding vector of size 768 for each token. For uh, text classification, uh, embedding vector uh, from CLS token only is enough for the modeling. So in this example, we input this uh, sentence and then uh, 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 to BERT, the BERT tokenizer convert um, each word to corresponding uh, token ID, um, adding by adding CLS, SAP, and the path. And then those token ID goes through a uh, BERT model. And then at the end, we have um, 768, the value for each token. But this, again, for text classification, um, the vector from CLS is enough. So we input them uh, into uh, uh, lowest regression. So this challenge, uh, literature AI for uh, drug induced liver injury challenge, uh, participating in this uh, challenge, we downloaded data from the Camda website. 
Um, so it's a very balanced data, 7,000 also positive samples and the negative samples. Um, as you can see, uh, the PubMed ID title abstract are available. Um, so here positive means uh, this uh, liter uh, the, the papers are relevant to daily drug liver, uh, drug induced liver injury. And the negative means uh, those papers unlikely to be relevant to Delhi. So this is a classification problem. Um, so I think this, uh, the curation was done by um, uh, FDA drug expert. So we combine title after that for each paper and then using TF-IDF order to back vectorization, vectorization te techniques, we extract the features and then we input them into machine learning model, including uh, Lewis regression, random forest, and the uh, uh, SVM. For benchmark test, we also um, evaluate the performance of first phase. Again, we used uh, a vector um, the values from CLS token, and then we input them into uh, Lewis regression. So this is our idea. So we think that the, the vectors from TF-IDF and the water to back um, are somewhat different, but can be complementary. So we simply concatenate the two vectors together for modeling, and we input them into machine learning models. Actually, this improved the performance. Um, I'll show you um, the result later. So initially, uh, the discovery data, this data was released by Camda and then uh, validation uh, data sets were released uh, later. So while we are waiting for validation data, we design the internal validation uh, the scheme like this. So we split data into three groups uh, for uh, each um, class label, positive samples and negative samples, and then um, it's like namely uh, the report cross validation. And then we, uh, at each iteration, um, the two poles data were used from each for modeling. And then um, the model was tested on uh, one third of samples reserved. So we iterated this process 30 times and then uh, reported average uh, performance metrics. So once validation data, uh, were available. So we used the whole data, discovery data for the modeling. And then we tested um, on seven different um, unseen um, the, the sets. So here T1, T1, 2, 3 are matched with B1, 2, 3 in terms of the extent of difficulty and the imbalance. So, and then I think the B4 is a very uh, independent uh, test set here. So um, this bar, the chart show a top 10 most common words in positive and negative data in discovery data only. So uh, you can see that patient is the most common word in both, um, but the positive data you can see um, there are some drug-related words like MG, drug, and the dose. Um, this scatter plot is kidney visualization. So the left one is the results using title and the abstract post, and the right one is the title only, um, the result. So, I mean, it's very obvious that the abstract has more information to distinguish um, uh, positive samples from the negative samples. Again, this is just two dimensional space uh, visualization. Um, so in the higher dimensional space, we may see more the separable um, uh, the result between um, positive and negative uh, samples. Okay, so... Okay, so after water to back the modeling, we, um, the water similarity was investigated. So we input um, uh, drug, the keyword, uh, into water to back model. So, so these are the results. Um, so actually, closest words 
to the drug in embedding space. And then um, keyword cancer, uh, the many cancer related words um, that came out. So this is accuracy um, uh, plot um, on threefold cross validation using just um, the um, discovery data. Okay. So here in the middle, SVM, linear SVM uh, using TF-IDF vectors achieved the best performance with 94.5% accuracy. And then interestingly, so in the BERT model, so this is the result after three, 30 iterations. So the BERT model, in the some iterations, BERT model achieved the, very, uh, the best performance. But overall, the performance of BERT was worse than others. So I think there is some um, the room to improve the BERT the model. For example, in this case, um, I used the, just a general BERT, but the, the previous uh, speaker um, the mentioned about something um, it, uh, PubMed BERT. Also, there are several variants of BERT model like BioBERT, the, the Med BERT. So if we use that BERT, other BERT, we may uh, increase the performance. So another thing is the BERT model is very computationally very expensive. So we, I mean, other models, I mean, it took just a few minutes in the core lab pro, but BERT model, it took um, uh, 24 hours. That's a maximum in core lab, you can learn it. Um, and then, but I couldn't increase the epochs very much, just I used a 10, around 10 or so uh, epochs. But if we increase the epochs, we may see the better performance. So this is um, uh, the result for uh, uh, internal uh, validation. So as you can see here, so when I used both uh, vectors from water to back and I TF IDF, so all algorithms had a better performance than um, using water to back or TFI depth, the vector only. Also, um, so here SVM, um, linear SVM achieved 95% of accuracy and 95% F1 score. But here also interestingly, so when I used only title, not, I mean, not using abstract, title only, also I achieved 89% of accuracy. Um, that's very interesting. And then this is external validation result. Um, so n is the number of papers um, so provided. As you can see, as uh, one to three, I mean, with increasing number, the number of papers also increase um, with more difficult, uh, it's a, like more the difficult uh, the challenge. So I think, the, um, yeah, so, so we, uh, I think we received, I um, mean, achieved a reasonable um, the result. So in conclusion, machinery method using vectors derived from NLP uh, text vectorization techniques, uh, TFIDF and then uh, what to that, what were developed to classify literature related or unrelated to daily. The machinery models trained using um, the combined the vectors improve the uh, classification performance. So this developed uh, analysis pipeline is generalizable uh, that uh, can allow us to um, apply this to other NLP uh, problems. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.